Studying the microscopic world usually requires expensive equipment and needs to be done in labs. But these images were made with a microscope that costs less than a dollar to build. It's called a fold scope, and it promises to reveal nature's secrets to millions of people who have never been able to see them before. To me, it's like the pencil of microscopy. How many of you carry your pencil with you? Everybody has a pencil box with some pencils in it, right? So we started thinking... Pencils are everywhere, so should be microscopes. I have a very simple vision of every single kid in the world carrying around a microscope in their pocket. Can you imagine what this thing could do that I to love? To make so microscopes as ubiquitous as pencils, bioengineer Manu Prakash and his colleagues designed one that's not just cheap, but also small and foldable, made mainly out of paper. So once everybody has a sheet, the reason it's made out of a flat sheet of paper is not just the fact that paper is a cheap material, but paper has a phenomenal property that if you fold it properly in a given set of instructions, it gives rise to precision. We're going to fold it so it's on top of itself. You can align optics that is important for a microscope to work in ways that would generally require a lot more resources. There is a lens, it's very small. What Conventional do do optics can be hundreds or thousands or even like tens of thousands of dollars. The glass lens that we're using is only six and a half cents a piece and can give you magnifications over 2000x. So we take the sticker and we first put the sticker like this and then you put the hair. So then mount it whichever way you want to mount it. It was very crucial to build a tool that you literally could use all the time, not worry about whether you're gonna break it or not. What you want to do is the most important thing, not the tool. Oh, wow. Oh, this is an incredible one. Hold it, hold it, and so. Oh my God. Do you see your hair? Yeah. You see the big line? So you have to pass this one around to everybody. I have black things in my hair and long things. Yeah, so show, show that to somebody. The living world far supersedes our imagination of how things actually work. You see that? Oh my God! You see the perfect hair. And to see that unroll in kids is just phenomenal. Do you He's like, yeah, I showered. Like, <laughs> and it's fantastic to actually do this with kids who have no stereotypes of what it means to do science. We found a nematode and a weird looking cell. There is no notion of this is a good question and this is a bad question or this is what you should ask. See, it keeps moving. There is no prize, the prize is in the experience. Do people have other ideas of what is the first thing they wanna do when they go home today? If there was one thing you wanted to look at, yes. I would want to look at my dog slobber. <laughs> <laughs> I run these workshops okay, for three, four years yeah. now. Every time I ask them what they're going to look at, there are unique answers. And I'm scratching my head what's in there. You know, how much bacteria do dogs have? I, I don't brush my dog's teeth every day. So the, the diversity of bacteria they're going to have might just be incredible. And I myself can't wait to actually do that experiment right away. In 2015, after several years of developing the full scope, Prakash and his colleagues decided to share their invention with people around the world. We just said one day, why don't we make 50,000 of them and just give them to people? They have now shipped fold scopes to people in more than 130 countries. There are people in Iran, Syria, Mongolia, Indonesia, all kinds of places in India, China, Russia, all parts of Africa. We knew that people would do creative things, but the explosive nature of what people did with it is really the most heartwarming story for me. In India, students in remote areas are using fold scopes to improve crop management. The fold scope can really help with some preventive measures. For example, if you look at leaves, if you see that there are pest eggs that are coming up on the leaves, we can localize which part of the agriculture field is being infested. 
In the Amazon, researchers are studying insects in their habitat. Insects are small, and out in the rainforest, they're hyper-diverse and hyper-abundant. So that's why I was sort of interested in this more portable, robust piece of equipment that I could take out with me. And in Tanzania, they're exploring the relationship between their environment and their health. When a person uses this horoscope, they realize that it is, it is good to wash hands because they have seen that there is dangerous bacteria which they will make me to have suffering from different diseases. Many people have said the most fun they have in science is when they not only just discover something, but when they tell somebody what they discovered. To facilitate this communication, the team created a website where Foldscope users could share their findings. I was really amazed that a microscope could be made out of paper and could work so well. Okay, this is me trying to wrangle down this little shrimp guy. I added some moss here just to make it more homey, which is kind of weird now that I say it out loud. Perfect. Wow. It's changed how I perceive the spaces in which I live. Places that seem like they're very manicured are actually very wild. I had no idea bug wings were hairy. No idea, right? There is one very special example to me that stands out. This is a mother-daughter pair where the daughter is only six year old. And the daughter, just like many other kids, loves the movie Frozen. So we decided to do a project that was all studying ice and crystals. And so every sort of crystal that we could really think of we examined it under the fold scope. Yeah. One of the things I really loved was how it was a community that allowed a lot of different people from around the world and Manu and his colleagues to work with us directly. Because mm -hmm. we had a lot of things we tried to grow as on slides with like crystals that just didn't work. And we could say, hey, we've got trouble. There are times when she posted just a single sheet which said, please help, because she was trying to image ice cream and she would take it out and the ice cream would melt and then she figured out she could put the full scope inside the freezer. It was kind of difficult, but we got some fun things and sticky fingers out of it. She loved the sticky fingers out of the <laughs> ice cream. <laughs> the online community is perhaps one of the most attractive aspects of the full scope. When you see a beautiful post by somebody, or when you see a certain, say, a fly, do you want to go and see it yourself? So this aspect of sharing of science is something which is very unique and people are even able to post in their local language and get responses in local language. To me, what's most important about this tool is not just to the service of science, but science to the service of these people. What is the community gaining out of it? And that's what my goal is. The fact that a lot of the world right now doesn't have access to the most basic science tools means that a large portion of the world is not participating in the creation of new knowledge. Scientific capability should be a fundamental right. Why is it that we don't move towards a society where people are actually engaged in scientific discovery to a point where they have some role to play directly in it? And of course, you will never be able to do everything that's done in a sophisticated lab built with millions of dollars, but you can start.